Hey everybody, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about frame rate, frames per second, and some of the guidelines that I go by myself in deciding what frame rate, frame rate I'm going to use for a given project. Uh, so there's no right, there's no wrong answer to this. It's really just a matter of taste, but I'm going to, I'm going to kind of describe where I've landed. I actually do have kind of a methodology to deciding which frame rate I'm going to, I'm going to use for a particular project. Now, through the course of this video, I'm going to be talking primarily about 24, 30, and 60 frames per second. And when I say 24, 30, or 60, I really mean 23.98. 29.97 or 59.94 that we use here uh, in the United States. Now the other thing I'm going to mention is that a lot of the principles I'm going to be talking about here do apply to the rest of the world because I'm going to be talking more about principles rather than specific rules. So if you're somewhere in the world that shoots 50 frames per second or 25 frames per second, the same kind of principles apply. So when I say 60, you can think 50, and I say 30, you can think 25, and I say 24, you can also think 25 because those are also very, very similar, very close. So uh, this video right here is being shot right now at 30 frames per second. And as I talk about the different rates, I'm actually going to switch the camera so that you can kind of see the difference a little bit. But that said, the timeline that I'm going to be editing, and when you watch this on YouTube, you're going to be seeing everything shown at 60 frames per second. The conversion between 24 and 60 is not exact. Obviously, 24 doesn't divide evenly into 60, and so we have to do something that's called 2-3 pull down on the video so that the motion is just going to be just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit jittery. You've been seeing this your entire life, so it shouldn't seem too weird. But if you're if you were to watch the video frame by frame, you would see that the sequence goes two identical frames, and then three identical frames, and then two identical frames, and then three identical frames. Anytime there's 24 frame material on a 60 frame per second timeline, 30 obviously goes right into 60, and so that's very simple. It's just two identical frames for for each source frame going into the 60 frame timeline. Okay, so um, first talk a little bit about 60 frames per second. Okay, so what you're seeing right now is actually 60 frames per second. Uh, and it's going to have a very different feel to it from what I was uh, what I was shooting before. That was 30, this is 60. So motion here is going to be a lot more fluid. So as I move my hands around and whatever, you're going to notice that the motion is just more consistent. It's not as choppy. It's going to feel more like what you're seeing, what you were seeing in real life if you were sitting here in front of me. That is very useful when you're shooting something that's got a lot of action, like a sporting event or esports or that kind of thing. For those sorts of events, I always shoot at 60 frames per second. So if I'm shooting where something where there is a lot of action, 60 frames per second is my go-to. It'd be nice if we could go higher, but unfortunately most of the video distribution platforms out there, things like YouTube, don't support 120, nor do most of the pieces of equipment in my video production chain. So while this camera that I'm shooting on will do 120, my video switcher, my streaming devices, my recorders, etc., do not. So 60 is really the upper limit for practical uh, for video production. And if you want to go beyond that, you're getting the specialized equipment that just just unattainable at this point in time. So. Okay, so 60 frames per second, very smooth motion. You get a better sense of what's really going on. It feels more like reality than some of the alternatives. So let's move on and talk about kind of the opposite end of the extreme, which is 24 frames per second. Okay, so this is 24 frames per second, or at least that's the source footage that I'm shooting. So you're watching this on a 60 frame per second timeline. So motion is not going to be 100% smooth. There's going to be just kind of a little bit we call judder, where uh, as I move my hands, you'll see a little bit of movement and then a bigger portion of movement going from one, one frame to the next. It's going to alternate back and forth because of that three to pull down that I mentioned a moment ago. So 24 frames per second is what we actually use when we're shooting movies. So Hollywood, when they shoot movies, they're almost exclusively 24 frames per second. One of the reasons that they like to use this is not just tradition, but also because 24, because it has that lower frame rate, it's not quite, it doesn't feel quite real. It feels just a little bit off, a little bit fantastic, a little bit surreal. That is to your advantage when you're shooting something like a movie. It helps to, the viewer to feel more like this isn't reality. This is something that's a story. This is something that's taking place in another another realm essentially 
And we can use that to our advantage. If we want to have that feeling for the video that we're shooting, 24 frames per second is a good way to achieve that. Personally, uh, I do use 24 frames per second for events, but there's only really two types of events that I use that for. Like one of those is musical events, uh, concerts and that kind of thing. And we also did, we've also done a series of just live performances of different artists as well. And those I do shoot in 24 frames per second because of that feeling that it's not quite real. It helps to make the music, the concert, whatever, feel just a little bit more like it's happening somewhere else. A little bit more fantastic. It adds just a tiny sense of mystery, uh, even though viewers won't necessarily be able to pinpoint, but it, it does have that feeling to it. And that's very much advantageous to us as video producers when we don't want to convey uh, the feeling of somebody actually really being present. Yeah, so, so I do use 24 frames per second whenever I'm shooting uh, concerts and musical material. And there's one other situation as well. Uh, every year we get invited to do a couple of film festivals and live stream events for a couple of film festivals. That's another situation where 24 frames per second is really ideal because when we play video clips that are part of that, that source material is, is already 24 frames per second. And I'd rather not be trying to convert that to anything else in order to go out on the stream. And also you have a feeling of consistency when cutting between live and pre-recorded material for that particular situation. So, but 24 frames per second is definitely an option. Um, there are some downsides to it, as mentioned, when people will watch 24 frame material on a display, a monitor, a, a phone, tablet, whatever, that operates at 60 frames per second. The motion isn't going to be 100% smooth. It's going to be just a little bit jerky, a little bit, it's what we call jutter, but it's going to be just a little bit strange. Uh, as, as you're seeing something move on screen, it's not moving in even increments. It's kind of just a little bit uneven in, in, in its cadence. So it isn't necessarily ideal uh, in that way. But that feeling of 24 frames is definitely different than 30 or 60. And if that's what you're trying to convey with your, with your live stream or whatever, there is no real reason not to choose 24, especially if you're going to be distributing the recorded video later and somebody might be watching it on a television or other display that's capable of displaying it in true 24. So with that, let's move on to 30. Okay, we're back here at 30 frames per second. This is the frame rate that I shoot most everything. I mean, there aren't the many events that I shoot 24 or 60. That's kind of the exception rather than the rule. And basically all of the videos that I have here on YouTube are shot at 30 frames per second. 30 frames per second is a great compromise uh, when you're shooting something that's not moving around a whole lot, like me sitting in my chair talking to camera or a situation that's similar. 30 frame works really well for that. It has a fast enough motion to it that it doesn't feel jumpy but it's not so fast that it feels too smooth and too much like someone is sitting right there in the room with you so the other advantage to having lower frame rates like 30 versus 60 is you're dealing with smaller files you know typically the files for a 30 frame per second recording are going to be about half the size of a video that's shot at 60 frames per second. So keep that in mind, you know, if you need to worry about data rate on a live stream or you need to worry about how much space is gonna be used on recording media, you need to record for a longer period of time or whatever, dropping to a lower frame rate can cut that amount of data down. It isn't exactly half going from 60 to 30, but it's close enough for purposes of coming up with an estimate. So I should do another video at some point about data rate because a lot goes into that, including the type of content that you're shooting as well. So anyway, uh, let me know down in the comments what frame rates you actually like to shoot and the types of events that you use for, for each and uh, see if it happens to line up with what I've kind of landed on after years of having done this. So anyway, if you have any questions about any of this, you can leave those in the comment section down below or join us over on Discord. The link down there on the bottom of the screen, djp.ly is for my Discord server where we've got a huge community of people who are in video production and are eager to answer questions and help each other out. That's about it for now. So thanks everyone for watching and have a fantastic day.